Hello, this is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and this is the I Wish I Hadn't Done That um, jewelry video. Actually, I purchased this jar full of buttons and vintage jewelry uh, for $6.99 at my local thrift store. And I purchased it because I really liked the jewelry that I saw peeking out from among the buttons. Um, and I was so excited when I got it home. I sorted through the buttons, took out all the jewelry, looked at all the jewelry, started harvesting some of the rhinestones, and then realized I hadn't made a video of what I had found. So now you're getting um, the jewelry video after the fact, but I hope you don't mind. So the jar is about two-thirds full still of buttons, lots of vintage buttons, lots of nice sets of buttons, but let's concentrate on the jewelry. Um, first off, in the jar, I found this amazing choker necklace, um, silver tone uh, with black glass cabochons. Um, I don't think that they are onyx or stone, just from the weight of them, and, and they warm up as you hold them. Whoops, I got it tangled together already. Uh, vintage, uh, definitely hook closure on the length of it. It's, you know, definitely a choker. It's short. It, uh, the, it needs some cleaning on the back um, and some shining, and then it's uh, perfectly wearable otherwise. So a beautiful piece of jewelry from the button jar. And we'll just put that here. This would have cost me 2 to $3. Uh, $2 if I bought three identical or three pieces. Um, three dollars if I just bought one piece so uh, I'm already getting my money's worth from the button jar and uh, lately there hasn't been that much to choose from in the the uh, three for uh, six dollar range um, mostly it's got individual prices on everything next there is this um, brooch you can see from the back it's riveted on the back it's not a V shape um, uh, but it's definitely vintage by the, the style. Um, probably what you, people would call repoussé, but it's more punched metal to get the shape. Uh, horse chestnut leaf, I would say. Beautiful green stone, uh, rhinestone in there. And then two of the six pearls are still on the brooch. Um, I will probably replace all of the pearls once I've cleaned the brooch. Um, because it will be difficult to match um, those pearls. And today, while I was getting ready for this video, I was looking on the back and said, oh, look, there's some words or some writing on the back of this pin that I hadn't noticed. You can't really lift the pin any higher, but right here is punched the word Coro. I was totally surprised. I've been collecting Coro jewelry among other uh, makers uh, Coro, Sarah Coventry, Emmons um, I have jewelry from Monet and Avon and Trafari but Sarah Coventry and Coro and Emmons oh and Seagull Pewter are the ones that uh, I've been concentrating on so amazingly I found a coral brooch in my button jar and it'll just need a little bit of repair uh, I joined uh, the Repair, Refinish, Repurpose Vintage Jewelry Group um, on Facebook. It's uh, run by Sandy Campbell. It's got amazing uh, information units that you can use to uh, learn all about restoring, refinishing, repurposing uh, vintage jewelry. And it's one of the most fun groups that uh, I belong to on Facebook. The people are generous with their time and information and they have the most amazing creations that they've repurposed or the most amazing restorations that they've made. Um, so I'd certainly recommend the group. Um, and I, I'll be going to the units for that uh, group to get more information about fixing that coral brooch, but also about what to do with all these little pieces. Um, I've put them all together in a in a bag be, just to keep them together. Sorry, I got something hooked here. All right, so 
Um, in the button jar, there were four of these. They're four um, pseudo cameos. Like they're just they're just plastic on a, on a filigree silver tone back. Some of the edges are rough, so I don't know if they actually had little rings that um, then had uh, jump rings that connected them all together in a bracelet of some sort. Um, but having four identical ones will make it easy to uh, use these in repurposing. And with them, I have put these two uh, filigree dangles, these um, beautiful... Uh, shaped silver tone filigree pieces with faceted uh, crystal beads. One, uh, one has two beads at top and bottom and one has two at the top, one at the bottom. Um, sorry about that. Um, just, uh, I don't know where all the beads have gone astray. I Probably this was from a necklace. And the other pieces that I have a couple of uh, faceted beads on their own. Um, a beautiful faceted crystal, a couple of square um, crystals, beautiful, and another faceted round, plus a hook that says Hong Kong, no, sorry, hook that says Japan, um, that could be used to make uh, these into a necklace or another piece of jewelry. So again, um, so beautiful pieces for repurposing. Um, and then there's this. This is kind of like the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. It's a pretty sad version of a rhinestone pin. It's uh, so poorly made. It's almost sweet. <laughs> if, or, you know, you like it because it's so bad. Um, you know, a really rough edge here. Uh, rhinestones that are sort of curving, curling right off of the edge um, on the back, really rough pot metal, rough edges, um, and yet all the rhinestones are there. None of them have fallen out. Maybe nobody ever wore this because it wasn't um, sophisticated enough. I don't know. But I'm going to leave it as it is. I mean, it's a great source of beautifully sparkly rhinestones. But they're all there, so I hate to, to take it apart. Um, and uh, I'm just going to love it for what it is, you know. And so there's a second um, complete piece of jewelry from the jewelry jar. Um... There were lots of earrings in this button jar. There's a here's a pair of pierced um, earrings, pastel colored uh, faux pearls. Um, there's the pair. So there's the third complete. Oops. Um, there we go. Third complete. Um, piece of jewelry. Here's another set of earrings. These are clip-on earrings. They're not, uh, whoops, I can't get them apart. Okay. Um, so clip-on earrings, a nice little clip, um, a nice, very wearable style, in excellent, excellent condition. And the only markings is that right here on this part of the clip, it says patent pending. So I would assume uh, from that, these are older because they don't mark stuff that way these days. Um, and I assume it's the type of clip. There's no patent number or anything, but a nice light little gold tone uh, set of earrings. Then there was this little dangle. I don't know if this was part of an earring. Look at that gorgeous red glass uh, marquee stone in the center there. It's beautiful. Um, and a little faux pearl, just pressed metal, could have been a pendant, um, could have been part of an earring, would have been stunning uh, as a pair of earrings, um, but I'll put it aside and save it for repurposing in some way. There's also this um, slightly heavy post earring. The uh, post has been bent um, I'm afraid if I tried to bend it back, it, it'll break off. Um, but a, a nice weight of metal. 
And the metal pieces could certainly be repurposed. There's beautiful uh, red rhinestones down the center, but one is missing. So it, this isn't uh, um, part of a pair. There's only one in the in, there was only one in the button jar. So again, I'll set that aside for repurposing. There was this. I'm gonna try to hang it so you can see. So this is three squares, two silver tone and one painted white. Um, could have been a part of a pair of earrings. Could have been a pendant. I uh, don't know. Um, I think because of the little rings on the end here, more of, a, of an earring. But uh, certainly can be reused as a pendant and I'll save it um, as it is for that purpose. Then there were these earrings. And uh, these are unusual, these earrings. These are post earrings. There's a pair. And I've never seen in earrings uh, put together quite like this. There are rhinestones on either side of the earring. And they're, they project through the back of the earring. Or the earring uh, metal was um, surrounds the back of the rhinestones. And then all the enameling on the earrings... And the rhinestones are covered in resin. The tops and the dangles, everything's covered in a very smooth resin. Um, they're beautiful, very Celtic looking. And um, they kind of coordinate with this, um, the same green as this uh, coral brooch. So another pair of wearable earrings. So that's three pairs of earrings, a brooch, and a wearable necklace. Then, there was the bracelet. Okay, here's a lovely gold tone and rhinestone bracelet that was in the button jar. And uh, some of the gold tone has worn off, but these are beautiful sparkly rhinestones. It's hard to really get the sparkle to show up on the camera, as well as, I don't know if I can, if it shows up if you get closer or not. Oh, a little bit of flash there. So, uh, unfortunately, right in the center where you would be wearing this, right here, one of the rhinestones is missing. And they're fairly large, but I hope I can find a replacement. I'm going to uh, use advice from the uh, Restore, Refinish, Repurpose group to uh, get the best shine on this bracelet, um, and restore the rhinestone, and uh, have a perfectly wearable bracelet. Um, it's a fold-over clasp, but there's no marking, and it was well-loved in its day because you can see um, how worn the back is. It's The gold tone is pretty much worn off. They're, they're down to the sort of a silver color of the metal. Um, I probably could use Gilder's paste on the back here to bring back that gold color, but I don't know how it would work on the rest of the, uh, the bracelet. Anyway. A re restore job for me that uh, I'm sure I will learn a lot. Then there's this slinky piece. This is a beautiful, flexible bracelet. Look at how it just sort of folds and moves. Um, rhinestone bracelet, just gorgeous, just so flexible um, and feels so slinky and smooth. Um, Three rows of rhinestone, uh, cupped rhinestones. The cl box clasp here works very well. It's nice and tight, but it's you can see it's very dark. So I would want to um, restore some color to that so that it's silver like the rest. Um, I think that that connection stands out. There we go. That black piece kind of stands out on against the whole thing. Um, and the only other problem is right here, we're missing one of the rhinestone cups. But uh, from the button jar, I saved a piece of something that has a couple of baguettes, a round rhinestone, and a bunch of uh, small rhinestone cup, so I'm hoping that looks like it's the right size to fit in there to restore it. I just have to figure out how to 
take one cup off of here and then link it back in on the other side. Then the next piece that doesn't need restoring, just a little bit of cleaning, is this lovely pin. Look at the uh, beautiful red. I'm trying to get the light to sparkle off there. That's better, maybe. Red square rhinestones, round rhinestones, and then little rhinestones um, in these leaves. Nothing's missing. Um, needs a little cleaning and riveted back. So again, uh, a vintage piece. So there's yet another complete vintage piece. Three, um, two brooches, a necklace, and uh, three sets of earrings so far. This uh, next piece, I didn't believe it was real. Or, you know, I didn't believe that it was not a copy. This is a fur clip. As you can see by the big long points, those are meant to go into a fur coat and clip this on. This looks brand new on the back. Um, incredible. It is missing two baguettes here, a rhinestone there and a rhinestone there. But other than that, it is incredible shape. These baguettes are kind of grayish. They don't shine as well as everything else. But I thought for sure, looking at this inside part, that this was a reproduction. And then I thought, well, why would somebody bother to reproduce a fur clip? Anyway, I went online. I looked at other fur clips. And believe it or not, vintage fur clips look just like this, many of them on the inside. This mechanism, the hinge mechanism, is identical to many of the ones that I saw. Um, and even though there's no maker's mark uh, anywhere, I became convinced with some research that this is actually a real fur clip. So in a button jar, I found my first rhinestone uh, fur clip. And it just needs a tiny amount of uh, restoration. So I was absolutely thrilled. This has got to be the best thing I found in that button jar as far as I'm concerned. Then there was this brooch. Show you the back. There's the uh, um, filigree back, the brooch pin. Uh, it's a little wavy. It's been a little bent out of shape on the back, but that's not a problem. It's that antique gold kind of look. Yeah, you can see the bends there. Um, and it's got this beautiful rich green uh, cabochon. On the front, I believe that there were four other cabochons, smaller ones, one, two, three, four, in those locations, and probably four even smaller ones here, one, two, three, four. So I just have to find some cabochons of colors that I would like to see. I could see this being, you know, red, green, blue, uh, yellow, red, green. There's all kinds of uh, ways that this could be colored. I haven't searched online for anything uh, like this, um, but I am looking forward to uh, trying to find the cabochons to restore it. And then it also goes with these earrings very nicely. This little piece was in the button jar. It just gold tone metal with some uh, Figurative work around the outside, highlighted with black paint, and around this around the faux pearl, highlighted with white paint. It could have been part of an earring, could have been part of a pendant. Uh, it's very clean on the back, um, lightweight. I'm not sure its original purpose, but definitely will save it for uh, repurposing in another piece of jewelry. Then there was this sort of plain looking hair clip uh, broken on the edge but then when you turn it around and look like at it like this you see all those sparkling rhinestones and uh, not sure how to get them captured best they sparkle more for me than they do for the camera 
Anyway, except for the one missing here, this is a beautiful set of uh, rhinestones there. It's riveted to the plastic clip. Oh, and it says something, made in USA. Oh, cool. Um, I'm going to save this for the rhinestones. I don't think I'll ever uh, use it as a hair clip, but a nice source of rhinestones. Then there was this necklace. I'm not sure. I'm going to hook it here so that it's pretty short. And there's absolutely nothing missing, nothing wrong with this necklace. Vintage necklace. Um, all the rhinestones for each set of uh, little white glass stones. So each set, pair of white glass has a rhinestone. They're all there. And there's the little gold tone leaves in between them. Um, beautiful. Um, the chain is a little dull and worn. Um, and that can, I'm sure it can be cleaned up. There's a lot of uh, yellowed glue on the back. Um, where these glass pieces are glued on. Whoops, sorry. Keep banging my camera. Um, I'm not prepared to clean that at this point in time. I suppose if you you wanted to, you could, but it's very wearable just as it is. And I have to look up this little dangle to see if I can identify um, the maker by the dangle. I probably should be able to. I mean, this looks very much like a Coro or a Monet or a Trafari vintage piece. Um, it's just not marked in that way. So, as you can see, one, two, three, four. Um, well, this needs repair. You know, four vintage pieces out of a button jar, plus a bunch of sets of uh, beautiful earrings. Here's a, a single earring. It's kind of like um, uh, this little ring that I found. At first, I thought there might be two sort of matching earrings, but no, this is just a little post earring with some rhinestones and a faux pearl. This is a, an adjustable ring with rhinestones and some in clear and colored. Center rhinestone is raised. Quite lovely. Um, and uh, this is not your bubble gum machine kind of ring. This is a uh, decent quality. Doesn't look like it's ever been worn. So a couple odd pieces to put aside with rhinestones um, that can be repurposed. And then there's this. And I would have loved to have seen this um, if it was in a pair of uh, earrings, uh, I'm not sure I can get show, get the right color for the or the to show you the the rhinestones are sparkly, but they are a lighter purple color. They're not dark the way they're showing up here. They're much lighter. Um, but isn't that a, a, a very interesting vintage textured uh, pair of shapes and uh, you know riveted together. Um, so definitely vintage, only one of them. So again, this could be uh, made into a pendant. Um, I'll set it aside for repurposing. This is, uh, I would say, is a little modern pendant, just a ceramic heart with a uh, dotted purple um, glaze on it, sort of a, a goldish shine to it. There was one pearl earring, and this looks like a freshwater pearl, just by its shape, but uh, only one of them. Pearls are always worth saving. These are a bunch of rhinestones that I saved, and if I find it, I can show you what I saved them from. Okay, so here's a bunch of rhinestones I saved. Here's what they came out of. This is a button. Can you imagine if you had more than one of these uh, buttons on a piece of clothing? 
Uh, so I was able to save the big center uh, rhinestone. It was missing um, probably half of the other rhinestones, but I saved the rest of them. This is a nice heavy metal button piece. Um, it needs a lot of cleaning. So I'll be using the information from my Facebook group um, about how to clean this. And I could have used information from them about how to get the rhinestones out um, better without damaging them. Um, some of the gold foil is still left behind, so that particular rhinestone's not much good. Uh, but I saved it anyway. And I'll save this in case I decide to fill the, it back up with rhinestones it would be really neat instead of just being uh, clear rhinestones you could have a colored one in the center and, and a mixture of colors around it um, I'm not sure what I'll do with it but I'm going to hang on to it then there was another pair of earrings these earrings are almost perfect these are post earrings Kind of like the gold ones that with uh, the clip-ons, but this uh, nice silver tone earring is very clean, except this one's missing the little silver ball. And it, the missing part was not in the jar. So unless I find another little silver ball that matches this, I might have to take this off and then put two pearls or two cabochons to make this a wearable set of earrings. There were some other little earrings. Here's a, a little pair of what I'm assuming are faux pearl. They don't feel gritty, but uh, uh, just a nice matching set of earrings. So another set of earrings. This is a modern set of earrings that was in the jar. So quite a range of age of things. This is a fish hook pair of earrings of rind with rhinestones. Whoops, apologize for that. So you can see the beautiful two rows of, of rhinestones in the, uh, the rectangles. They're a, a, a yellow color um, and gold tone uh, earrings to go with them. And not missing any rhinestones, so perfectly um, wearable, quite beautiful earrings. I think they'd, be, they'd flash quite nicely uh, hanging from your ears. Now this was something a little unusual, and I should have taken a picture of this. I really should have thought of that. Um, this is a bag of rescued plastic beads. They're more sh uh, like a bugle bead shape, but very small. So more, uh, I mean, perhaps a small cylinder bead, but um, not very precise. And this is uh, what it looked like, so to speak. Here's... Um, Ten marquee shaped, again, very rough, faceted plastic beads. And what this was, was 11 sections of a collar where everything was wired together. So I saved this one section because it was complete. So you can see how there was the, the, uh, the marquee shape in the center. And then all these, um, these little picos a little band across the top that then went to the center of the next lozenge of, uh, of beads. So it would have been uh, quite a lovely collar. It was in very bad shape. This fine metal was just breaking everywhere. Um, and it was very easy to deconstruct it. But I did save one section in case I ever wanted to reconstruct it. The only thing I can... Um, Assume is that this was perhaps a, a, a collar that you could sew onto a dress and then take off when you no longer needed it or when you needed to redesign the dress. I don't know if it was a collar for a dress that you wore during mourning or just a decorative collar. Um, but in bad shape, um, but it was a great find in a button jar. Gotta be careful that I don't ruin this one. There's all those pieces. Now, what else was there? Oh, there was another pair of earrings. These are very modern. I think I should be able to hold them. Excellent shape. Um, pair of fringe gold tone earrings, post back. 
excellent condition, no maker's mark, but uh, all the shine and glitz is there, so very wearable once uh, I add a pair of backs. Not my style of earring to wear, but I'm sure that uh, someone would appreciate those. So that's one, two, three, four, five sets of earrings. Perfect earrings. The next item I found in the button jar was this pair of cameos. They're just uh, plastic cameos in a gold tone setting. Um, quite lovely. Uh, for some reason, the bale has a, a little bead in the center with a bit of gold tone on it. And they're both like that. So at first I thought there was just a bead stuck in there, but they're both made that way. Um, I'm not sure if these were part of earrings. I mean, you know, there's a pair. So maybe that was uh, in the bale, that was where the wire went through to hang them from your ears that way. This one is um, off-centered, so it has to be taken off, glue loosened, taken off, and, and re-glued. Um, so I'll put those aside and save them uh, for a future jewelry project. Interesting thing of these, they're not marked with a maker's mark, but it says C441 as a number on the back of each of these. So I haven't uh, done any research to see if C441 cab uh, cameos brings up any kind of uh, information, but uh, possible. Another set of um, perfectly wearable earrings. These are quite delicate. <coughs> These are uh, kidney wire earrings. Um, a beautiful, delicate wire flower with seed beads, and then seed beads and a little round bead. So pretty little earrings. Very delicate. I wouldn't want to put them with the other heavy earrings. There's another pair of earrings. These are, again, modern earrings. These are post earrings. They're gold tone hearts. And in the center of the heart, there is a circle that's um, textured silver metal. And in the very, very center, there's a little spot that looks like there's a speck of something. I don't know if there's a speck of a diamond um, in there. Uh, it's very hard to tell. It could just be the, the silver. Um, but again, another wearable pair of earrings. Again, not marked. Um, and definitely modern. This um, is a single earring, but it's actually parts for a pair. Um, this was a lever back earring. This is what the earring originally looked like. Nice uh, rhinestones on the bottom. Here's the part of the second earring that's missing the lever back. So with ha uh, having both parts, I can um, just get a set of matching lever backs and make a pair of earrings out of that. There was this um, well-worn, well-loved, I hope, uh, locket. Whoops. Uh, you could see uh, there's some residue from tape on the inside where pictures were probably um, stuck in the locket. The back has lost a lot of its gold coloring, and same with the front, except in the center where this little um, oval with the uh, rose was attached. So I'll save this just for um, a piece of metal for practicing uh, using enamel or uh, alcohol inks, um, other metal patinas that you can uh, purchase for working with metals. Um, so it'll be good practice piece. There was this pair of earrings, which um, are clip-on earrings. They're not marked as to a manufacturer. And they're actually quite attractive in themselves. Um, very shiny, very clean. But up on the top here, you can see the holes where there were there was a single baguette and eight uh, rhinestones and 
Um, some of the stones were missing, so I popped out the rest. And I'm just going to hang on to these pieces. Uh, certainly the clips could be repurposed. Um, all the metal pieces could be repurposed in some way or used to repair. Um, there was another pair of earrings that were I used for harvesting. Again, I, this is where I should have made the video before I started. These also are clip earrings, not marked as to a uh, manufacturer. Um, and there were would have been three rhinestones in each, but uh, I think that each was missing one. And there were leaves. This one has two leaves still. This has one. This originally had three leaves, and I moved one of the leaves out of the way to get at the rhinestone, and it promptly broke off. Um, I'll probably take the rest of the textured leaves off um, and reuse them, and then just keep the clip parts um, for repair or repurposing if needed. But it was good practice opening up the uh, prongs and uh, taking out the rhinestones because they just came right out um, when the prongs were open. So, keep them some more pieces. Now this was interesting. I These um, are probably more special than they look to you. They're um, little glass marquee stones, but they're unusual in that they're almost like a cat eye. They have yellow in the center and then clear on the ends. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, there's six of them. They were in the jar. Obviously came out of something. Um, and I'm going to hang on to the six because... Who knows, I might find in the future something that they fit into perfectly. Or I may run across somebody who's trying to restore a piece that needs these. Uh, they're, they're quite unique stones, so uh, I expect that they'll be very worthwhile to hang on to. Not too many pieces left. I guess just two. There's another pair of earrings. Again, these are modern earrings. A hoop with a, a silver tone hoop with a, a little cabochon in a silver tone uh, disc. Um, perfectly wearable, um, but quite grayed, I think, from the rubbing of this ring on the earring. I'm not sure if they can be restored to a more silvery color. Um, they might clean up, but uh, there's another wearable pair of earrings um, that was in the button jar. The nice thing, I guess, about the jewelry all being in with buttons is because the buttons are all plastic rather than metal, they couldn't scratch or really damage any of the, the jewelry um, by being in there. So this last piece is in a jar with a collection of uh, rhinestones. Again, there was a, a piece of rhinestone, uh, a, a rhinestone cup chain that uh, I don't know what it went to. It has a, a, a loop on one end. It might have been part of an earring. I'm not sure. Um, but I put it in here with these rest of these rhinestones because the rhinestones came out of this brooch. Um, this is another vintage brooch. Beautiful uh, silver back. A little bit of puddling. No manufacturer's name, but I'm not complaining. But a very beautiful design. Um, and it was missing at least two of the baguettes here. Uh, and then various rhinestones throughout. Um, this just needs a good cleaning and then um, to have the rhinestones put back in. Um, I'll have to just uh, figure out which uh, sizes I need and if I don't have them on hand I'll have to order some. Uh, the Sandy Campbell's group has good resources about uh, places to order vintage stones uh, or vintage style replacement stones as well as rhinestones. And good tips on how, how to use uh, calipers to measure them. But I already use calipers to measure beads, so that's not a, 
a big deal for me. So this is the last piece from the button jar and a piece I'm looking forward to um, restoring. It doesn't look too bad by, just by itself, but it'll really sparkle once it has all the rhinestones. Well, that's the end of my button bar journey. I hope you um, enjoyed this uh, recap of what I found. Um, certainly got my uh, money's worth and uh, some beautiful pieces that I'll be looking forward to restoring. I uh, hope you join me next time as I show you some of the, the jewelry that I've purchased for restora restoration, to restore or to repurpose, um, and some of my other jewelry finds as I collect Sarah Coventry, Coro, um, Emmons, and uh, anything else that I run across that's uh, really beautiful vintage jewelry. Thanks.